About 50 years ago, it was observed when tripen blue, the acidic dye was injected into living animals, all the tissues of the body were stained by it, except the brain and spinal cord. Why was that? That was due to a hypothetical barrier, which prevented the diffusion of tripen blue into the brain tissues from the capillaries. This barrier was named as blood-brain barrier, which exits in the capillary membrane of all parts of the brain, except in some areas of hypothalamus. Blood-brain barrier is a neuroprotective structure that prevents the entry of many substances and pathogens into the brain tissues from blood. Because neurons being very sensitive need stable environmental conditions. How does the blood-brain barrier prevent substances from entering the brain? Well, that's due to the tight junctions in the endothelial cells of brain capillaries, which are responsible for the blood-brain barrier mechanism. To understand that we need to talk a little about its structure first. So, let's compare the structure of a normal capillary and that of brain capillaries. In capillaries of other organs, adjacent endothelial cells leave the cleft called fenestra, which allows transitosis of several substances through the endothelium. However, in the capillaries of the brain, fenestra is absent because the endothelial cells are fused with each other by tight junctions. Tight junctions are formed between endothelial cells of the capillaries in childhood. At the same time, cytoplasmic foot processes of astrocytes or neuroglial cells develop around capillaries and reinforce the barrier. Astrocytes envelop the vasculature almost completely. Another important cellular constituent of blood-brain barrier are the parasites which play a significant role in the formation and maintenance of tight junction and structural stability of the barrier. In brain, parasites function as macrophages and play an important role in the defense. Now, coming to the function of the blood-brain barrier, it can act as both a mechanical barrier and transport mechanisms. It prevents potentially harmful chemical substances and permits only the metabolic and essential materials into the brain tissues. So, by preventing injurious materials and organisms, blood-brain barrier provides a healthy environment for the nerve cells of brain. Substances which can pass through blood-brain barrier include oxygen, carbon dioxide, water, glucose, amino acids, electrolytes, some of the drugs such as levodopa. 5-hydroxytryptamine, sulfonamides, tetracycline, and many lipid-soluble drugs. Lipid-soluble anesthetic gases, such as ether and nitrous oxide, and some other lipid-soluble substances can also pass through the blood-brain barrier. The substances which cannot pass through blood-brain barrier in normal conditions include injurious chemical agents, pathogens, such as bacteria, drugs like penicillin, and the catecholamines. One important point I would like to highlight here is that dopamine also cannot pass through blood-brain barrier. So, that is the reason Parkinsonism is treated with levodopa, instead of dopamine. If we talk about infants, since their barrier is not well developed, the bile pigments enter their brain tissues and cause jaundice. It causes damage to the basal ganglia, leading to kernicterus, which is a type of brain damage that can result from high levels of bilirubin in a baby's blood. So this is how the blood-brain barrier protects our brain. For more bite-sized, easy-to-understand videos, keep watching scotia.com.